Okay, kiddos, uh, we're back with uh, some more 14.4 examples. Um, do you like my Metamora Tennis Camp shirt? Did you come to tennis camp? Should you have come to tennis camp? Are you a player? Could you have been a player? Just wondering. Uh, I'm going to do some examples for you that are a little trickier. Um, the story with these examples is this. You just get better at these problems by doing some. And so I'm hoping that by watching me do a few, you'll you'll just get better at them. Um, if we were in class together, I'd be calling on you, looking for suggestions, uh, taking volunteers, picking on people, whatever. You're not here. No, not a single person is here. Again, it's me and a bunch of uh, empty desks. So I'm going to call on myself a lot. We're going to start. Uh, we're on page 784 in the book. So if you're following along, if you want to pause and get to page 784, uh, I'm going to do some of the evens. I'm going to start with, what am I starting with? You may know. I don't know. I think it's 16. I'm going to start with 16. Um, so follow along and let's let's try these out. Okay, check in the screen. Screen looks good. Okay, here we go. 16. Because 1 minus 2 cosine squared over sine cosine equals holy moly. This one looks complicated right off the bat. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. When I look at this, the first thing I notice is in the numerator, I got a 1. And I know that 1 equals sine squared plus cosine squared. So I'm writing that for the number one. Didn't do anything else yet. All I did was substitute sine squared plus cosine squared for one. Then I'm going to clean it up. Look what happens. I have cosine squared minus two cosine squared. Still kind of gross. Don't like what I'm seeing. This side's ugly. I picked a hard one right off the bat. Do you know what to do next? Here's what I'm going to do next. Let me let me recopy what I got. I'm kind of at a loss on the left-hand side. I don't know many other things that I would want to do right now. So I'm going to work on the right-hand side just a little bit. And the only thing I can think to do on the right-hand side is change stuff into sines and cosines. Okay, tangent is clearly sine over cosine. Sine over sine. Okay. Now, on the right-hand side, I have a subtraction problem with fractions. And when you see subtraction problems with fractions, you ought to think L, C, D. You ought to think common denominator, which is going to be cosine, sine. So this one needs a sine. And the second one needs a cosine. Okay, let's clean up what we have. Let's see, sine squared minus cosine squared all over the LCD, which is It's like magic. All of a sudden, they look like each other. So the best part about doing these identities is if you don't make any mistakes, even if you're going the wrong direction, you'll still be okay. You can always wind your way back to the right answer as long as you're not making any bad mistakes. So I didn't exactly know what I was doing on this problem. I just kept trying new things, and eventually I got to a place where the left-hand side matches the right-hand side. Okay, that's number 16. Questions? Anybody?
Ashley. No. Okay. Ashley. Good. Let's try. What's next? 18. Let's try 18. Ugh. Do you think this one looks yucky? The left hand side doesn't look like I can do much to it. So I'm going to focus on the right hand side. Um, there's probably a couple ways of doing this. The first thing I want to try is. I want to split the right hand side apart. And have one over secant and tangent over secant. I don't know if that's going to work or not. But it's a legit algebra step. I mean, I haven't made a mistake yet. If I make a mistake, I'm in bad, bad shape. But for now, I haven't made a mistake. I know that one over secant is cosine. And this, that's a mess. Let's turn it into sines and cosines. What is secant again? One over cosine. All right. Well, can you see what's about to happen here when I copy, change, and flip? When I copy, change, and flip, I'm going to get what I want. But I got to show it. Copy. Change, flip, cancel stuff out. Sine plus cosine equals cosine plus sine, yes. Okay, so that's 18. Um, again, a little bit tricky. We just played around with it until we got something that worked. Uh, I want to do two more. I want to do number 20 because this one, if you look at number 20, I'm looking at it right now and I'm thinking, I don't know how to do number 20. I'm just, I don't know. We're, we're going to try. We're going to, we're going to try stuff and see what happens. So the first thing that pops into my mind when I look at 20 is I see an addition problem with fractions and I think common denominators. That's, that's the first thing I think of. Give me a common denominator. So it's going to be 1 minus cosine times sine. Okay, that's going to give me common denominators. Let's clean that up a little bit. Sine squared. What do I have going on here? I have one minus cosine times another one minus cosine. That is foiling. I am not going to show my work with foiling. You guys should be good at foiling. But it's foiling, and it's going to foil to one minus two of those plus cosine squared. This is my foiling. Check it out if you need to. Write your two sets of parentheses. Boil it out, you'll get that, I promise. Over my LCD. Okay, and I'm trying to get this whole thing to say, we're not very close yet, not at all. Okay, numerator, sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So that's a one. There's another one that seems like two. So let's write that. Okay, just simplified. Now look at the numerator. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? I hope you see oh, a factoring opportunity. Both terms have a two. Yank it out. Go, go. Yanking out the two. Oh, 
Okay, all I did was yank out a two from here and here. I see canceling. Leaving two over sine theta. Well, we are trying to get. Try to get two cosecant. Well, guess what? The flip of sine is cosecant. And we got it. Ha! Aren't these fun? You have to admit you're having a little bit of fun. These are a little bit of fun. We are proving that two things are equal using really awesome trig identity stuff. One more. Let's do one more. You want to do, let's, you want to do one more? One more. Let's do one more. That one. 22. <laughs> we should have stopped while we were ahead. This one looks hard. What do you think we should do? I'm going to change everything into sines and cosines. I don't know what else to do. I'm going to try that. Whoops. Tangent is sine over cosine. Cotangent is that. But look at look at what we have. I got sine over cosine plus something. I sure wish the something were over the same thing as that. That's one, right? Cosine over cosine. That's one. Same thing down here. I got a one. That's one. How about that? Watch what's going to happen. Okay, simplify on the top. Yes, adding fractions over. So far, so good. That wasn't tricky. That was elementary. That was like eighth grade algebra adding stuff, except with words. Okay, look what we're trying to get. I think we're going to get it. Let's copy change and flip. My board rarely does what I want it to. All right, copy. Change, flip. And we're gonna get some cancelage. Yeah! Leaving sine over cosine. Which I think is what we were gunning for. Okay, so here's the deal, gang. I could do these all day long until I was blue in the face, and you don't want to watch these all day long. Um, I was going to do up to maybe three more, but I noticed we're already at 14 minutes. That's long, and I'm tired. Are you tired? This is a lot of math. Woo! I'm going to cut it off for today. Um, the ones on your assignment are going to be kind of like this. You're going to have to play around. You're going to have to experiment. Um, you may get them on your first try, and you may have to go back and start over. Do not give up. El no de up give That was Spanish, I think. Um, okay, so this is your Friday task. Your task was to watch this video and then try some problems. Um, check classroom for the problems. Uh, have a good, good, good weekend. I hope you did good work this week. I'm banking on you doing good work. Can't really call on you. I wish I could. Ashley? Nope, can't do it. So that's all, gang. Have a great weekend.
Remember, email me if you have questions. Um, I will answer as quickly as possible, which is usually very fast. Um, have a good weekend. See you later.